one. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, today we'll read chapter Revelation chapter 13, 1 through 10. Uh, yesterday we read about the woman and the dragon. The dragon came down from the heavens, taking down a third of the stars with it, um, and then chased chasing the uh, woman in the desert and spewed a bunch of water trying to sweep her up with the flood but the earth protected her and then he was standing on the shore of the sea when we ended so we pick up there find out about this other beast that comes out of the sea. Um, so I'll, I'll pray and then we can get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Uh, thank you for the time we can spend together in your word. I ask your blessing over this time and that your presence and the Holy Spirit will speak to us and make some sense of this and and know your heart, know, know you a little bit more through this. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on his horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was astonished and followed the beast. Men worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. And they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can make war against him? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 months. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. He was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword he will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of the saints. All right. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads with 10 diadems. Okay, that's, that's a brand new word for me. Diadems upon its horns and blasphemous, and a blasphemous name upon its heads. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard and its feet were like a bear's and its mouth was like a lion's mouth and to it the dragon gave his power and his throne and great authority. One of his powers and his throne. Oh, I'm sorry. One of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound. But its mortal wound was healed. And the whole earth followed the beast with wonder. Men worshipped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast. 
and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it? And the beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Uh, also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and conquer them. And authority was given over to every tribe and people and tongue and nation. And all who dwell on earth will worship it. <clears throat> Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the lamb that was slain. <clears throat> If anyone has near, let him hear. If any if anyone is to be taken captive, to captivity he goes. If anyone slays with the sword, with a with the sword must he be slain. Here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints. Thank you, Dylan. One thing that stood out to me is the beast had a wound on one of its heads. Mm -hmm. And that just reminded me of like how in Genesis, you know, the, the, the beast's head was crushed. Right? Or what is the what is the <clears throat> Is it when um, Adam, and, Adam and Eve eat the fruit, mm -hmm. and God says, "This is this is your basically kind of consequence," and one of right. the consequences was to the serpent. Yeah. Three fifteen. Genesis three fifteen. I can read that little snippet. Uh, it says, And I will put hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Ah. That is interesting, though. Well, no. I was listening to so the Bible project has has uh, and I was I think they put it out just recently an episode where they're talking about this and they read chapter twelve and thirteen and they were talking about how dragon that came down from heaven you know, had had this power and stuff, but he wanted to basically transfer that power to earthly power to the people on earth. So that's why he gave his his uh, his power to this beast out of the sea. So I wonder if there's a parallel between like God saying, "Yeah, Satan will crush your head." But he will fight his heel or whatever. Um, and if that that has a parallel between like Satan even giving kind of his offspring power on Earth, and so like is basically giving birth to this new beast. It, this new beast had to like have it, one of its heads brushed or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that's a stretch. Are you saying it was like um, just like God kind of uh, gave his full authority 
and power to his son and was Jesus, right? God in flesh. Mm -hmm. The dragon gave his authority and power to this beast. Yeah. Oh. Huh. So he's like kind of copying God mm -hmm. in that way. Wow. As he does with everything, I think. <laughs> like a counterfeit Messiah, a counterfeit Jesus. I mean, isn't that isn't that the quote from was it Isaiah? Or somewhere where they said, Let us be like God and God's like, uh no no no. Out you go. Actually I need to look that up because Maybe that's that Genesis, is. like the Tower of Babel. That's true. That's true. Must be like God. Yeah, so I guess like Satan has been doing that for a long time. <laughs> Trying to copy. I guess he wants he wanted to become God. And that's why he was hucked down to hell in the first place. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that the in this passage that the the dragon represents Satan, and then this beast represents the Antichrist, and that uh, that the four different. Um, attributes of the hmm. what was it the bear the leopard the mouth of a lion um all all representing maybe not necessarily one person but maybe a um a system maybe hmm. so I don't know. That's my question: is is could the Antichrist be a worldly system rather than one person? Mm. Hmm. President wanted to reach continent. One was a bigger president than the other, and he had more authority, and he was the one that got his head mashed. And I think, you know, so biblically, but the you know, left behind students, I think that's how they portrayed it. If I remember correctly in that book, was there were lesser governing heads throughout the world, but one major one, wherever it was all took place, and he was the overall contract. The main main. Right. And it's interesting because the three first was the page we followed it. It wasn't just a little second. Right. The whole first followed it. Dan, we're kind of have. I'm, well, at least I'm. I'm having a hard time hearing you. You're really quiet. I can. I kind of heard what you said, but it's pretty. Yeah, that My might head. help if you scoot closer. Um, but it's interesting because we are believers. We have read the book, and even after the, the rapture. I mean, even after the tribulation starts, there are a bazillion copies of this book throughout the world in everybody's language. And they could have sat down and read and said, oh, gee, this is all predicted. Let's see how it ends. And they didn't. <clears throat> and that, again, I understand I'm coming at it from the believer's perspective, but that, that's one of those things that is always fascinating to even if the Jews hope oh, here it is, read it. And they don't, they won't. 
things. I found that um, passage in Isaiah. It's Isaiah fourteen twelve through 15. How you have fallen, O Lucifer, son of the morning! How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations! For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Oh. Something that I heard in a, um, the Calvary Chapel sermon on this was uh, verse 1, it says, Then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. Um, he said, many times in the Bible, the land is referred to as Israel, and the sea is referred to as the Gentile countries. And so this could be interpreted as like, Coming, this beast coming up out of the, the Gentile, you know, non-Israel countries, which kind of also aligns with what you guys were saying before about a kingdom or a system, a coalition. And horns represent power. In the Bible, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it had ten horns, and on each horn were ten crowns. I think, Dylan, that's what diadem means. I think it's just another word for crown. I drew this. <coughs> that's a diadem. That's oh, my. Wow. That's my weird representation <laughs> of a diadem. Is that is that a tiara? Yeah. No, oh, is you okay? I might be completely off then. That's a tiara. <laughs> in the in, somewhere, the in my commentary here, it says the diadem symbolizes the beast's false claims of sovereign universal authority, which are in opposition to the true King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh huh. Yeah, mine says something similar too, which is, you know, goes up goes up the theme of uh, all of Lucifer's power is derived from uh, mimicking the real power of God, mm -hmm. and let's see my my explanation, what I thought was pretty good. Uh, several parallels indicate that the sea beast as a demonic rival mimics the lamb the lamb uh jesus obviously the lamb is worshipped by angels and saints uh, while the beast beast is worshipped by the wicked the lamb is slain and rose again while the beast is mortally wounded and recovered so mm. but presents i guess as though rising it's a counterfeit it's a counterfeit christ Huh. There we go. Diadem. There we go. Oh, there you go. Ah. Yeah, okay. It's kind of a TR, sort of. Thing with little hanging. Like goes on the forehead. It's the circlet thing, yeah. It's the chain. It's like a crownlet. I'm gonna call it a crownlet. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's important to understand too that Satan's power is not of his own. He was his power is ultimately 
given to him by by God. Is that right? Am I right in thinking that? I think Be so. Because he's God always allows him to in the story of like Job, you know, you can do this, but there are limits. You can do this, but in in even in in Satan's ultimate scheme is God says you can I will give you the I will allow you to do this but you cannot uh, you cannot affect the believers uh, oh, where am I going I'm losing my train of thought here ultimately God has the ultimate power and he wins in England. And I know we're getting clear to these interpretations, but it isn't, isn't even after all of this, all the tribulations, the, the big Armageddon battle, all of that, doesn't God end it with a group? Doesn't he just say this is it? Am I thinking right? He, he allows all this to go, but he has the you know, just like speaking everything into existence, he just spoke Satan into the hell. I think I'm correct. Well, God's. God spoke everything into existence through his word, so I could definitely understand that he could end everything through his word. Yeah. In, yeah. Yes. Yes, it kind of seems to be that way over in chapter 20, verse 9. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand of the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city that he loves. But fire came down from heaven and just and devoured them. Just blank. The end. <laughs> You'll understand it maybe when we get to heaven, but it makes you wonder, why do you go through all of that? Be because I think I think it's because God wants the credit and he wants to yeah. end it with a bang he doesn't want to just have a good one Damien yeah. it's kind of interesting regarding this topic it in the commentary, it says regarding the end of history, Revelation 17, 7 through 18 also portrays the beast's career as a parody of Christ. But this time the parody focuses on the final destinies of the two, whereas Christ's final coming results in the establishment of his kingdom. The final coming of the beast results in his decisive destruction. Lays it all out. And then in verse 9, if anybody has an ear, let him hear. Then I think back to before I was a believer. And even though it says that, I couldn't listen. I just couldn't have. So thank you, Lord, for bringing me in the flock. Any final thoughts or before we wrap up? I did like verse 10, the end of verse 10. This calls for faithfulness, patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of the saints.
And that just kind of spoke to me directly. That just, yeah, you know, patient endurance and faithfulness. Which is what we need every single day, right? Exactly. All right, well, is anybody feeling led to pray? I can pray as well. Dear Lord, Thank you for this word. Thank you for speaking to us and just ask for, for your comfort and your your uh, presence in our lives that we can be patiently endurant, have that endurance and faithfulness every single day. Um, your mercies are new every single day. And we thank you for that. Lord, just put this, put this picture in this story, um, in this, this revelation of what's to come. Um, please guard us against any spirit of fear or worry. Keep our eyes focused on you. And you give us strength and courage to, to go on and endure these these hard times. Um, thank you for your son Jesus, who is the true Lamb of God and gives us our hope worship him and him alone. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey guys. Have a great day, guys. Have a good day. Take care. Have a good one. See ya. See ya.